What up, nerds? I'm Jared, and this is Changelog News for the week of Monday, November 3rd, 2025. We are making a quick trip to San Francisco next week to partake in SyncConf, a boutique conference on the future of real-time, collaborative, and agentic software dev organized by Johannes Schickling from Prisma, Adam Wiggins from Heroku, Emma Tracy from Colt Repo, and more. If you're going, let's sync up. See what I did there. If not, stay tuned for the best convos from the hallway track. Okay, let's get in to this week's news. The overlooked power of URLs. Ahmad Alfie found an old comment in his code that contained a powerful link. Quote, I clicked the URL and it was the prism.js download page with every checkbox drop down and option pre-selected to match my exact configuration. Themes chosen, languages selected, plugins enabled, everything perfectly reconstructed from that single URL. Here was a URL doing far more than just pointing to a page. It was storing state, encoding intent, and making my entire setup shareable and recoverable. No database, no cookies, no local storage, just a URL, end quote. URLs can do so much, but we don't always use them to their full potential. In this article, Akhmad explains how URLs are even more than user interface. They're state containers. They have their limitations, yes, but Pareto tells me we're not benefiting from the virtues of the URL nearly enough. Akhmad agrees, quote, we've built increasingly sophisticated state management libraries like Redux, MobX, ZooStand, Recoil, and others. They all have their place, but sometimes the best solution is the one that's been there all along. How I use every Claude Code feature. The more I use Claude Code, the more I want to use Claude Code. That's a strong indicator of good product design. The challenge I have is the surface area of the product feels overwhelming. Not that I'm holding it wrong, necessarily, but that I could be holding it better. But if I'm being honest, which I actually always try to be, so I don't know why I feel compelled to prefix the following or any statement with that phrase, but here we are, aren't we? I don't know how much of Claude Code's feature set is worth investing in. Are slash commands here to stay? Are subagents even worth it? Will I switch to AMP or Codex or Gemini CLI next week and make any Claude Code specific learnings moot? With those questions in my mind, I love posts like this one linked in the newsletter from Srivu Shankar, a brain dump of all the ways he's been using Claude Code for me to cherry pick from. More people write posts like this and I'll keep linking them up for the rest of us. AI broke interviews. I'm not sure the software industry's interview process was functional prior to October of 22, but as Yusuf Atis laments in this post, it certainly busted now. Quote, everyone now has access to perfect code, perfect explanations, perfect system design diagrams, and even perfect behavioral answers. You don't need a network. You don't need experience. You just need a second monitor lying. You don't even need that. Check this out. End quote. The this that he referenced in that quote is an interview coder service that has been recently upgraded with audio support and 20 plus cutting edge undetectability features to keep you invisible across every interview check. It's now time for sponsor news. Postgres for agents is here. Tiger Data just launched Agentic Postgres, the first database built from the ground up for AI agents. We've seen Postgres extended in every direction time series, vector, graph, but this is the next evolution. Traditional databases wait for humans to query them. Agentic Postgres is designed for autonomous agents that read, write, and reason about data on their own. It's Postgres reimagined for the agent era with built-in memory, context management, and safety controls so agents can collaborate without stepping on each other's data. If you've ever been wondering what the quote database for agents looks like, Tiger Data has just answered that question. Learn more at tigerdata.com or check the link in the newsletter to read the blog post. Intern saves TikTok $300,000 per year because Rust. During his internship at TikTok, Wu Zhaoyun ported a core payment service from Go to Rust. Quote, we faced a classic engineering dilemma. How do you squeeze more performance out of a critical system without compromising stability or breaking the bank? This is the story of how I tackled that challenge by selectively rewriting a performance bottleneck in Rust, 
resulting in a 2x performance gain and nearly $300,000 in projected annual savings in cloud costs, end quote. One of our industry's favorite principles is premature optimization is the root of all evil, but it's important to note how much heavy lifting the word premature is doing in that axiom. Well-timed optimizations can yield huge wins like the one Wu and his colleagues deployed. Oh, and if you think this experience soured Wu on Go, quote, paradoxically, this project gave me an even deeper appreciation for Golang. Go's incredible developer productivity and well-rounded performance makes it the ideal choice for 95% of our services. JSON for LLM prompts at half the tokens. Tune, which stands for Token Oriented Object Notation, is a compact, human-readable serialization format designed for passing structured data to large language models with significantly reduced token usage. The idea here is to still use JSON programmatically, but convert to Tune for LLM input, saving about 40 to 60% of tokens. Why? Because those tokens still cost money and anything that costs developers money will be optimized away as much as we can muster. That's the news for now, but go and subscribe to the Changelog newsletter for the full scoop of links worth clicking on, such as the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine Link Fixer, the only thing that matters, and if you don't tinker, you don't have taste. Get in on the newsletter at changelog.news. Last week on the Changelog, Adam Jacob joined us to discuss how agentic systems for building and managing infra have fundamentally altered how he thinks about everything, including the last six years of his life. And Adam and I finally pushed record on a spooky friends episode all about software projects that are dying, dead, or undead. And coming up on Wednesday, Andrew Nesbitt tells us all about Ecosystems, the world's most comprehensive and accurate data set about open source production and use. And on Friday, we play what should be the most competitive round of our Pound to Find game show, because every participant, except Adam, is already a champion. Have a great week. Like, subscribe, and five-star review us if you like our work. And I'll talk to you again real soon. All right. Rob Dingnegian. Well, well families who homeschool their Rob children Ding often Ding say one of the first questions mm, asked by others is, what if your kids want to play sports? A first alert six is Bill Katofimo found out a national volleyball tournament has provided that outlet for nearly three decades. That's my best pronunciation yet. Senior Lila Santo and her team, the Omaha Metro Warriors, stepped into Saturday's final competition looking to get back in the playoffs. I have grown to love the sport so much and to love the people as well, but also grown so much in my ability to play and enough to make varsity as a senior. For a week, homeschool varsity and JV athletes like Lila competed in the National Homeschool Volleyball Tournament. The season started in August, depending on the state. This round, Lila's team faced the Wichita Warriors of Kansas. They're a really hard team, so we're going to have to play really well, but I'm excited. Support was felt all game as Lila's dad, Jared, cheered from the crowd. You know what? It's for real. We'll get some dinner. And her mom, Rachel, the assistant coach, was on the sidelines. At the end of competition, the the Warriors word, would finish fifth in their division. That feeling you get with, your, with the girls that you mm-hmm. trust so much right, and the coaches that love you so much, it's okay. just, I mean, so. it's indescribable. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. By the way, the Metro Warriors were one, one of 23 varsity L-M-A. girls programs competing okay. all week. They're one of three Metro teams and one Lincoln squad representing Nebraska in the tourney. In total, 78 boys and girls teams across 11 states hit the floor chasing a title. Continues to grow not just in numbers, but also in the different divisions that are part of the program and part of the tournament, which is really cool because the boys program is growing, which is really neat to see in the Midwest as well. The tourney is a chance for homeschool students like Lila Santo to compete for a shot at first place under the bright lights. It is an opportunity for homeschool athletes to come and compete at the end of the year when maybe they don't have the opportunity throughout the season and 
larger tournaments like this. It's an environment that many homeschool athletes do not get the chance to experience. They get to play kind of under the lights in a sense from that standpoint and have a lot of people watching them when probably is not the case most games. For Lila, the tournament gives homeschool students just like her the chance to shine out on the floor. We play just like any other high school. Like we're here to play volleyball and even though we're homeschool, that doesn't change it at all. Reporting at the Iowa West Fieldhouse, I'm Philip Catafamo, First Alert 6. Organizers tell us a recreation league was started this year to create more opportunities for homeschool students. They hope to grow that tournament and welcome more schools from across the country. More information on that can be found with this story on firstalert6.com.